In the first two Jericho Forum identity videos, we learned about entities having a core identifier with immutable linking and how you can use this to create a series of personas. Now we are going to explore further the concept of trust and the sources of that trust in terms of persona and attributes. Each of Tom's many personas can independently come from different roots of trust. So a government persona can be generated with trusted and verified attributes, whereas a persona that Tom self-asserts has at best trust in the reputation that his persona builds up over time. This concept of distributed personas has a number of key advantages. For a start, it is privacy enhancing, with the content of each persona being under Tom's control. This minimizes the exposure of attributes if the repository holding an individual persona is hacked or compromised. And of course, in this global internet-enabled world, Tom can easily maintain personas in multiple countries, but all linked to Tom's single core identifier. In some transactions, it's very important to deal with an anonymous persona, but still be assured that it's always the same entity. This is serial pseudo-anonymity, or sameness, which is critical to enable, for example, electronic voting. Tom can register to vote, creating an anonymous voting persona derived from his core identifier, probably via his citizen persona. Now Tom can vote from anywhere in the world anonymously, but only once. There is no knowledge that identifies Tom as the entity who voted, or more importantly, how he voted. And in countries where it's mandatory to vote, and where his failure to vote loses Tom access to some state services, Tom can always go down his identity tree and assert that his persona voted. Tom is using a core identifier linked to his multiple personas. This allows him to assert just the parts he needs, with only those parties having access to the information they need. So let's say Tom wants to buy a large screen TV. He can assert his address in a persona validated by the post office or another address registration authority, assert his credit payment via his credit card persona, and assert his supplier persona, for example, in this case, Amazon, for the purchase. As these personas are all derived from Tom's core identifier, the vendor can ship this high-value item in the certain knowledge that address, credit card, and supplier account are all validated by their trusted sources. Due to immutable linking, Tom is the only person who could have asserted these attributes, and therefore the vendor can be confident that this is not a fraudulent transaction. Tom has never had to create a persona with more personal information that it requires, and identity attributes are always under his control, maintaining the principle of primacy. So in summary, what have we learnt about personas and trust? First, having different personas allows each persona to operate with different levels of trust. Second, Tom can choose to associate attributes to different personas with different levels of trust. Third, distributed personas will minimize the damage and loss of Tom's attributes if they are compromised. This is a fundamental difference to maintaining a super repository of Tom's attributes, which would totally compromise Tom if it is successfully hacked or accessed by a corrupt government. And finally, Tom's distributed personas and his ability to assert attributes from multiple personas minimizes attribute exposure and therefore the ability for identity aggregation, another privacy enhancing feature. In the next video tutorial, we will look at the bigger picture and understand why the identity ecosystem needs to be about more than just people.